one day. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, welcome everyone to Late Night Restaurant Show. I'm, I'm trying to be prim and proper. We just did a recording with another show that you'll see tomorrow night. Um, to everyone that's going to be joining us, we're on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. Um, I think we're the only late night restaurant show on the planet. Why did we stop fun. TikTok, Jay? You know what? It's ever since they went to X, it's a little harder. No, TikTok. Oh, tick, TikTok? It's way off, by the way. Sorry. I Just can't like, believe let's you're, do, you're... Let's get, you're, the, you're, let's get yeah. the count in to do our counting. And I don't know who does who does the ABCs, man, but okay. I'm getting grilled by you on TikTok. Oh, no. <laughs> Everything is possible. Um, I, I don't... I, I You know what? I, I, I have to do TikTok through this other channel because in Canada, we can't stream through our PCs through to TikTok on live. So I have to use my phone. It's a feature that they don't offer in Canada. I don't know. I don't want to get into it, but that's the way it is, uh, which is fine. Um, yeah, so we're not doing TikTok tonight, but we're on all these other channels. Plus, we're not a podcast, so don't think we're on the other podcasts. But we are on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, everywhere else that you listen to, and YouTube as well, podcasts. So uh, we have an amazing guest. Mm-hmm. Like I tried to get a little dressed up <laughs> So of, of this. She's been in the industry. I can't wait to hear her journey. She is unbelievable when you read a little bit about her because there's enough information about her. And to have this person on the show tonight, Dominic, it's a special night. Dominic? Yeah. It Focus. Is Focus. It is. Focus. Focus. This is this is royalty. That'd be you exciting. Do you want to put a suit tie on for this one? I think this is like. I'll, I'll do the other button up and we'll let her say. See here, what okay, saying. here we go. <laughs> hey, she's amazing. Anyways, everybody, we're going to be right back with this incredible legend in our industry. And uh, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. Here we go. There we go. Welcome, Welcome Sarah, Sarah, to our show. Happy to be here. <laughs> this is crazy. First of all, we want to thank you for taking the time. We know it's late out in Toronto. Um, that's what we do, a late night show. It's really catering to Toronto because we know it's it's uh, late there and it kind of matches our show <laughs> theme. But I just want to thank you for taking the time. Um, Tommy, okay? Well, I feel like... We're not, we don't cater to Toronto. Come, like, I was trying not to say that, but Toronto's important. Of course, it is. Toronto's but, very important to us. Um, but like, we got the rest of the country to worry about, and there's there's some people in the states and in Europe, and we've had people from New Zealand and Defense Australia. Over. Yeah, like everybody's important. Sarah, you're important too. Don't <laughs> Toronto's very special. We live in Alberta, so we have to be careful, Sarah. <laughs> I, I'm from Winnipeg. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so How I'm a winnipegger too. Are you a Winnipegger? You're a Winnipegger. Yes. No way. Okay. Well, I Sarah grew up, went to school there, learned to cook there. Wow. <laughs> Did you? Were you? Are you chef? Are you trained chef? No. 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 <laughs> just, just, so <laughs> you say that? I'm sure you could go. I'm sure you can Uh Sarah, so you're the publisher and chief editor and own Dine Magazine, one of the top magazines in the country. It is incredible. How long have you been doing this for? 
uh, I uh, started the magazine in 2007 um, because, well, I had been working as a food and travel writer since 1980. But in 2001, uh, my husband died and I quit all my jobs for a few years. And then I wanted to write again because it's my hobby and what I love to do. And, um, you know, you can't go back and say oh, to a newspaper or magazine, oh, could you take me back, please? I didn't want to do that. So I, I went into a, new, a magazine store to see what there was and who I could pitch, and there was nothing. So I came home and told some friends, you know, I want to do they said, start your own magazine. So I said, yeah, you know, easy for you. To <laughs> but, uh, I, I don't know the back end. I only know, you know, the, 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 this side of the desk. But in the end, I did. And then um, my son uh, joined me. And he started off as... Uh, marketing and, you know, all those assistant this and assistant that. And we were a print magazine. A beautiful, glossy, oversized, gorgeous magazine. The first year I went to talk to uh, hotels, restaurants, tourism boards, and everyone said, you're doing this, count me in. And they wrote me a check. So the first issue, I had 100 pages of advertising and all the editorial. And I have to tell you, I couldn't believe it. But it was beautiful and it was great and we continued. Uh, that was 2007. That was before every corner store uh, had their own website. Yeah. So then, you know, things diminished, but still we were in great shape. We were all over all the uh, uh, consulates, all the Canadian consulates uh, uh, in, in Hong Kong, everywhere, and uh, in the U.S., and we, we were doing very well. In February of 2020, I was approached by a large company they wanted to partner with us in a way and work with us and be with us. And in the taxi on the way home from the meeting, I phoned Adam, my son, who was um, at this time executive editor or something like that. And I said to him, honey, we'll never have to worry again. And then two weeks later, it was COVID oh. and our business was over. So there were two choices. Either just call it a day, retire, you know, just uh, stay home and watch TV or something. <laughs> and uh, Adam said, well, we can go digital. We can have a digital magazine. I said, I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. He said, I do. And what I don't know, I will learn. So oh, he said, you be the publisher, I'll be the editor-in-chief. So that's what happened. And thank goodness, or we wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. Wow. Dom? It's, it's incredible. It's amazing. It, and again, it's this sort of story of um, we're going to do what it takes to make it work, right? Absolutely. And I like that it's a family business. I I I I, I understand that, and I like that um, you were a writer before, and that you 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 said I'm not just going to stop. Right, you wanted to keep doing that, which is important. There's not there's not a lot. I how many how many papers? If there, there's not even any papers, right? But how many food writers are left in Canada? There's not a lot. Well, not professional. Right. I consider that I'm a professional. I well, even love professionals. Right. There's not a lot. I did my first column in 1980, and I was the restaurant critic for the Sunday Sun. 
and for 27 years. That's a lot of writing about lettuce, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I I was at a I was at an event last night for TIFF. Um and uh at, at the the uh, at uh, the Sutton Place Hotel. And I met the man who owned the restaurant there. And he said to me that he used to own a restaurant and he told me the name of it. And he said, you reviewed me once. Oh, wow. I looked back. I looked back and I found the review from 1991 or something like that. How was it? Uh, the food was good. The service was terrible. Uh -huh. It was a Japanese restaurant. And I had two very important Japanese men who I had brought with me to this new Japanese restaurant. And the waiter did every faux pas that you can imagine. He even, he even told this Japanese man who is a dignitary that he was not pouring beer correctly. Wow. I wrote that in the review. <laughs> so anyhow, that's, fun. that's just fun. But uh, at the same time as I was a restaurant critic at the Sunday Sun, I was the international dining writer, a columnist, in the Financial Post for nine years. Oh, wow. Cool. And then I, I was a restaurant critic at the National Post. And uh, at the same time, I was a contributing editor at En Route magazine with a article every month at Flair magazine, double page spread every month, and at Elle magazine, where I was the advice lady to young women who I slept with my best friend's boyfriend, should I tell her? <laughs> so I was like mummy, you know? <laughs> Easy. And um, at the same time, I was uh, for 10 years the vice chairman of the Ontario Film Review Board. That is like the censor board. We, we classified uh, every movie that plays in theaters in Toronto. So that's my career. Here I am today. Wow. I'm very happy with our magazine right now because we are now being syndicated by post media across Canada, even in Alberta. Oh, and wow. um, really, and also um, by uh, uh, Glossy Lifestyle magazine in the United States called Resident. Cool. So for you, congratulations. We've got a lot of time, you know. Well, I think part of it's because. You're a professional writer, not and not to diss the the other writers that are out there, but there's not a lot, correct? Well, you know, everybody's but, a critic. No, no, but people that are doing it and doing it, let's say, well. Well, there are not too many of us left. Yeah, uh, in, in the in the classic sense of the word, who understand the cuisine who know what goes into preparing it. Uh, I saw a writer writing about a Thai restaurant and um, saying that, uh, criticizing a certain dish and saying that it was soupy. Well, the fact is, it is soup. It's soup. <laughs> so, you know, I've, I've traveled the world, not everywhere, but much of it, and uh, wherever I go, like to Thailand, to Singapore, to Hong Kong, um, I always stop in and find a place that gives cooking classes. Mm. I took a cooking uh, a class in Japan, and the entire morning was spent on how to hold the knife to cut a certain vegetable. It wasn't easy. I think like everything they do, they're they're serious about it in Japan. Every, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, 
the the transformation from print to digital, Sarah. How do you how do you make money? <laughs> well, we're it's not hard. About making money, are we? No, no, but you, you have to pay the bills. You have to yes. you have software and you know you, you have to have a little bit of a living. And but um the as much as it it might it hurts like picking up a magazine is still pretty special. It feels cool. Same with a book, right? Like when you pick up a book, there's a feeling there that you get. I like the really big and glossy. I still like that stuff because it You're and especially if the, pages, if the pages are thick. Yeah. I, I that says to me, hey, this these guys are serious about this. This is like real good quality. They care about the paper. They care about that stuff. But there's limitations to that because distribution's harder. And so there, there, as much as there might be some negatives, is digital helped get your word out? Uh, well, I, I don't. We, we don't do print anymore. Right. So going to digital. Has that been a plus? It has been a, an entirely different business. It's a totally different business model, different mm -hmm. uh, costs, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. different um, different revenue streams. What we're doing right now, well, first of all, when we changed over to digital, well, wait. When we did the magazine, I had a motto. Good enough is not in my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Nothing is, oh, it's good enough. I wanted the best paper, the best photographs, the best mm -hmm. printer, or why bother? You know? Yeah. And so I was very proud of that magazine that object and people used to say i love to take it to bed with me and read it and feel the pages and so on so our style of writing adam and as me is a personal narrative it's a conversation we don't just say i went here and i did that and this is available and so on and so forth it's not a press release we say how we felt doing this, how we thought while we were doing this, what were our reactions when we entered a room? Uh, how did it make us feel being doing there? So people feel like they're having a conversation with their best friend who just did an exciting thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes us um, more unique. And that's why uh, Resident Magazine in the U.S. wanted our articles, because they love our writing style. So when we transitioned to um, a digital magazine, I still wanted to do something special. And so we did um, video, video on the oh. cover, video inside. And on the cover, it said, read, watch, listen. So let us say we had a story on water sports in Florida. There's, photo, there's video of the guys on these things, on the waves and the water. And you feel like you're there and you read about it. And that makes you very interested. Our analytics from those magazines, uh, those digital magazines, were that people spent 32 minutes on reading the magazine. Can you believe that? We thought <laughs> it's not normal. That's wow. true. Yeah. But we captured them, their imagination and they want to read it. But now things have changed. And the electronic world changes like that, you know, very quickly. So right. now, apparently, people do not want to read a magazine flipping the pages. That's too much trouble or whatever it is. They don't want it. They want to scroll down. 
Yeah. The swipe. Let's scroll down. Yeah. So we have changed our format again. And we just, and, and also we have decided to make issues on, on singular subjects. For example, our last issue was all about Stratford, Ontario. Uh, you may know that there's a Stratford Festival, uh, which is uh, yeah. one of the best drama festivals in the world. We did the entire article on Stratford. Where to eat while you're there. Oh, about the shows. About uh, a particular special show that is um, uh, a bilingual Chinese and English called um, Salesman in China. It's Death of a Salesman when uh, Arthur Miller went to China to do a production in, of Death of a Salesman. So they wrote a play about it. So we wrote about that. And the restaurants, the theater, what to do what, if you're in Stratford for a few days, the interesting things to do, where to stay, all that. And it was extremely popular. We have some uh, other ideas coming up for other issues. And we're trying to keep them uh, more or less on a single subject. For example, if there's a, a big hotel and they have a spa and they have dining rooms and they have other things going on, we could do a whole issue on that. Um, that that's our plan now. And you scroll down and you have the whole story. I love that. So, Sarah, I got to ask you so many questions. I have so many questions for you because it is an honor to have you on our show. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the Canadian cuisine because, you know, me and Dominic, we, we get to have a lot of people over there. What do you sum up the Canadian cuisine today? Like, what, what's it like to you today? Because you've seen it. You've wrote everything. Like, you, 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 okay. you wrote it. The like, Canadian is it? cuisine is like the Canadian population. There's a war. People move. People flee. They leave. They go. They come to Canada from countries that we've never heard of before. Mm -hmm. And then before you know it, there's a restaurant, an Afghan restaurant, a Pakistani restaurant. Uh, we now have Chinese restaurants with cuisine from every corner of China. It's not all one. <laughs> So that is Canadian cuisine. If you're talking about Canadian food products that are distinctly Canadian, mm -hmm. we can be very proud of our beef, our pork, our triple A beef from Alberta, Sterling, I think it is. <laughs> what? You know it's it? good. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I was on a cruise. Sailing along in the ocean, and I go to the dining room for dinner. I'm looking at the menu, and I see it says for the steak, it's sterling silver or sterling uh, beef. Sterling yeah. silver is the is sterling the, silver right. beef. Yes, and I say to myself, "How did this beef get on this menu?" So I asked for an interview with the chef. He's from Edmonton. No way. That's why. So, you know, Canadian food travels and Canadians travel. Um, we have our potatoes. You know, we have our lobster. Yep. We have we have everything. Uh, like this is the promised land, you know. Yeah. Well, we, we were just talking about that. I was just talking with Jay about that, about a, a chef from Toronto saying that, you know, he would travel overseas and and go to Italy and he would get pretty quickly bored because the only food there was Italian. And he'd come <laughs> back to Toronto and he'd have all the cuisines you just mentioned. Pakistani, Pakistani Chinese, uh, Hin Hindi, uh, Hindu food, uh, African food stuff from everywhere in the world is available. So the, 
the cuisine choices are are really big. And in 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 his comments in Italy, they're just starting to bring in some of these other cuisines. People are just starting to explore and putting them on menus and having something. But it's nowhere as developed as as the food scene in Canada. It, it, it we're, we're very blessed to have access to all these different foods. And I, I like how you put it, Sarah, is that um, the food the food scene is a reflection of Canada and, and not necessarily, you know, we're not just beef and potatoes, and but we, we are all these other things. And now we're starting to see, I think, fusion, a little bit of it, right, into yes. uh, ad, adapt, and not necessarily even fusion, but adaptation of, um, like, Jay, there's, there's restaurants opening in Alberta, like um, Nova Scotia street food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, yeah. And, and it's what? Uh, Donair, Nova Scotia Donair. Yes. Halifax Donair is a thing. And I said, what? Like, I didn't understand, right? But then <laughs> I went ahead and I said, oh, shit. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and that's because whatever, I don't know how many years ago, 30 or 40 years ago, some people that let, settled there started offering that cuisine and it became yeah. very good and they they got good at it right you know it it was last year all of a sudden there are syrian restaurants yeah in in toronto mm -hmm. because people come they want to have their own food uh there's a, a syrian uh chocolatier who who has made chocolates in syria now he's here and he's making them here so that's that's one of the the wonderful things about our country that people are free to come and bring their culture uh, but it should be you know they have to they have to love us too yeah exactly street <laughs> so sarah i have a, another question for you so what's was writing all a, like a thing that you always loved when you were younger and you got into it or did you have another journey and this just started? Like, what was that like before you, the 1980s first article that you wrote? Were you always in love with food? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> my mother. <laughs> These are always my favorite questions. because we get to start. My mother was a wonderful cook. And I didn't cook at home. Okay. Because, you know, she, she was the, the cook. I went to school. I went to work and so on. And when I left home, I was, I don't know, 2021, 20, something like that. And I didn't even think about it, but I was just going to restaurants. And then I said, hey, I can't afford this. And I, I uh, looked to see what am I eating? What am I ordering? And I thought I can make this. So I created for myself a repertoire of 12 dishes and I would invite, you know, if I was dating and um, I would be very happy to invite someone, you know, they invite me out for dinner. I invite yep. them to my house for dinner. And uh, I did my repertoire. I did uh, veal scallopini. I <laughs> did uh, breaded chicken with mushrooms. I, you know, easy things, but delicious. And that's how I started. When, uh, when I came to Toronto and I met Al, who we got, I, I married Al Waxman. Um, Al Waxman from uh, King of. Uh, yes. Uh, Kensington. Kins King of Kensington. Yes. Jay, do you, do you remember that show? Wow. <laughs> just, oh. I, I remember I watched that show as a kid. It was an awesome show. <laughs> Thank you. Was, probably as a teenager to even. So he invited me out a few times, you know, we started dating and I invited him. And I said, you know, I do something too. <laughs> well, I, I can do something too. And um, I made uh, a steak. And I flambéed it with whiskey. Mm. And he asked me to marry him. 
a few more meals, but um, no, we we got along very well. And every, you know, I think even even today, when everyone is very cool, and they young people go out at eleven o'clock, you know, instead of at seven. Uh, and the the whole style of socializing is different. I think that if you can cook, you don't have to go to a restaurant all the time. I think it is so lovely and sociable if you can invite someone over to your house, even if you make a pizza or, you know, or a grilled cheese sandwich. It's it's a whole different ball game. I, I can tell you dating. I, I've, I've recently started dating again. Oh, I've, I've made both no, those. No. I've made both those things. And both of them were very grilled cheese got mentioned again yesterday. Dominic makes the best grilled cheese because, but it's, it's being in the kitchen together is fun. Yes, absolutely. You know, food is love. Yes. yes. I think when you, cook a meal and you sit down and eat it together it's an, a whole other element in a relationship yeah it's really sharing and my 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 kids as well uh, sarah they're, they're some of their best memories are are of us making pizza at home and and baking in the oven and you know smoke filling the kitchen or what whatever you know whatever happened around that meal. But it, I think that's a common story for many, many people is, is the, is what happened around the meal, what happened around mm -hmm. Sunday mm -hmm. dinner or what happened around the family barbecue. Right. So it's um, the proverbial breaking bread together is, mm -hmm. yeah. is, is important for, for everybody in, in all our life and in every culture as, yeah. as well. It, it is, it's cross culture. Food brings people together. Yes. Yeah. And, so, I, you know, there, there's there's another aspect. Uh, we're so multicultural in Toronto. I, I don't know how it is where you are. but Probably less, but it is. Okay. So there are people all around from, from everywhere uh, in your apartment building, you know, different people from different countries. But I think if you eat together and you know what your neighbor is cooking and you taste their food from, from some other corner of the world, you get to know them and you're not uh, uh, wary of them because they're different. Yeah. Yeah. We're not so disconnected from yeah. them as, as yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I do agree. I, I sincerely believe that. You know, I wrote my first cookbook in 1980. <laughs> That's another thing that I did. <laughs> did I wrote, you wrote a cookbook too? <laughs> oh, more than one. More than one. <laughs> and um, then I started to write little guidebooks about uh, called Toronto's Cheaper Eats. I did about three of those. So the it had to be no more than $50 for two. Uh, that was then. You couldn't do that now. But all of these restaurants, many of them were, um, a, 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 you know, a cuisine that's foreign to us. It, it wasn't a meat and potatoes kind of cuisine. And um, the man who was uh, the chairman of the United Way, saw this book and he wanted to make a special uh, print printing for the United Way because it was very inclusive and it included every kind of cuisine, every restaurant and a little bit about that restaurant. You know, everyone had one page and uh, I was very honored by that. Well, that sounds like it was before inclusivity in school. No? Yeah, it sounds like it was much before inclusivity. Inclusivity was cool. 
You never heard the word inclusivity. No, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's you know that's that's newer. But I've done a lot of things, and um, I intend to do more. Good for you. Well, congratulations. Um, I, along Jay's lines of questioning, when you when you were in school, did did you go to school for writing? What was no. your education? no no? What <laughs> happened is I was a reader. When uh -huh. I learned to read, my sister and I were both readers. Mm -hmm. We went to the library every week. We each took out three books. You are allowed three a week. I read mine. She read hers. And we exchanged. And it was so exciting on Saturday afternoon to go to the library and choose our books. So we always read. And when we were teenagers and older, in the summer, we would sit on the steps with neighbors and discuss a book, a Somerset mom book or, you know, something that was intense and think about it and so on. Reading uh, was my escape from anything. Not that I needed to escape anything, but it was my fantasy. You know, uh, TV... Uh, wasn't around until I was a teenager. I'm that old. So it was reading. That old. <laughs> uh, I read, and from reading, you learn to write. You yeah. start to realize certain styles of writing, uh, how to be conversational, how to write a conversation, a rhythm. And because I uh, was a... What I did before I came to Toronto and met my husband and married him is uh, I was an opera singer. And wow. I, <laughs> you're going to fall off your chair. I know. It's just like, it's another surprise every second. It's crazy. It's amazing. I, I sang with the, uh, for a couple of years with the Israel National Opera Ballet Company. What? Wow. That's me. I can't That's sing you. anymore, you can't but <laughs> I love you. So I now, well, no, but I want to say this, Sarah, because I can see now everything you've explained, you know, um, the opera, uh, your husband even, all this connects back to your magazine. I can see it. You are definitely a part of that magazine. I see it. it, it like yes. you can, you see that in what you produced with Dine. That's That's you. I see it. It, it reflects you. Was, remember, there was a um, a renowned criminal lawyer. He's not alive anymore. Called Eddie Greenspan. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember him. Yeah. So uh, we we were friends, and he called me once. He was in Vancouver on a serious case, and he was staying at the Shangri La, and he called me, and I couldn't understand why. Like, is something wrong? You know, and he said. I'm sitting in the Shangri-La Hotel, and I just read your magazine cover to cover. And I feel like you and I have had a big afternoon conversation. That's what I wanted it to be. Nice. Very cool. Well, it's, it, well you can see it. I, I, like, I was trying to figure out, because it's very, I come from an art world, so I have a degree in painting and a master in art history and i see i was trying to figure out where that art world comes into your play in your life because the magazine looks like american art magazine very it's a very it's very classy it's very very well put together from an artistic perspective and i love it like i'm i, I remember it <laughs> i probably bought some of your magazines when i was younger and it's incredible i was trying to figure that out so now it makes sense it all makes sense. But it's now. It's not. It's not just me. It's Adam also. He he does mm -hmm. heavy lifting and writing. And yeah, I see. He's the he's the he's the writer of many articles. In, in yes. Your... The first time, I hope he doesn't mind my telling this. Uh, I asked him to go to uh, Kentucky and write an article about bourbon. Sounds like a good gig. I don't know. <laughs> so he came back 
And he, he wrote it and he gave it to me. And I said, oh, okay, I'll fix it. <laughs> but I never had to do that again. Well, wow. He has surpassed me. Well, he has uh, a much greater um, education than I did. You know, uh, Adam is fluent in Japanese. He went to Cornell wow. to study Japanese language. He lived in Japan. He worked for a Japanese company in Japanese. He goes there uh, often. And when you understand a country like Japan, that certainly broadens you as an individual. Mm -hmm. Because that is like the other side of the moon. You know, everything, wow. everything that we take, like, it's different. So I rely on him. He relies on me. And we put out a magazine incredible incredible magazine it really is and and i i the one thing i miss sarah maybe you, you, i'm sure you remember this i miss the smell of magazines the paper and the smell yeah. something when like, I, I like i can smell it right now as you're talking this and i have you have your other stuff on my other screen here i can smell your magazine I don't know if it makes sense, but that paper, the fresh paper and the ink, and, mm -hmm. yeah. and then you get it and you get that smell. And yeah, When I, I used that. to get the boxes, oh, <laughs> send me a few boxes, you know, before it was distributed everywhere it had to yeah. go, uh, a few boxes for me. I'd open up the, the boxes and I felt joy. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you feel that joy in your body that happens a few yeah. you know not not too often <laughs> yeah yeah well it's that hard work right it's all that hard work and everything and it's like like dominic knows all the things that i create and stuff like this when it comes to programs and stuff and and, and different things that we do i like that you put all that work in and you see the end result and you see that come and that you like and i haven't had it where i'll print things off and i'll get the you know be shipped to me and it's here it is like it's it's incredible that feeling so I, I i i think i understand that and i just miss that i want my kids to experience that and it's the same thing as music i'm a huge album vinyl guy i love vinyl and i gave all my vinyl to my son and and oh, in my yeah. record, in my record player cuz I, I have like a vertical record player by the way like you don't see those too often but it's a vertical gave, record player my, my kids have mine and the record. Yeah, I did the same. I gave my boy, I gave my boy one. And I said, You got to experience this. I want you to experience the crackle, the smell of vinyl, and the you know, opening it up and sitting there with that vinyl in your hand, listening to the music and staring at the cover. And I want the same thing of I have magazines. I, I I collect a lot of magazines from from music from back in the day too. And I have them kept. And I, I want them to experience it when you sit on your bed or sit on your couch. And just look at a magazine and just enjoy that moment because it is, I believe we're going to see it come around again. I really do. I believe we're going to see it come back. That's my dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If there was some big company who said to me, I'll sponsor you. You just yeah. give us that beautiful magazine again. I would say I'm yours. So I'm going to tell you something because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a vision guy. <laughs> I think you should run a couple special editions a year of dying in paper. I mean, people will sponsor. I believe people would sponsor. Oh, you who? who will do right? that? Who? I think someone would. It's gorgeous. You're a legend. People will do that. I think people would. I think you would sell out in a heartbeat because I think it's something that we need to bring back. And I think a lot of people are getting to understand the things that we've lost and how important they are. And I think they want our kids to experience that. So I don't know. Maybe it's not right now, but hopefully we can get that. I would love to see a, a, a copy of Dine in my hand that's well, not in a digital format. Then that if, smell. You, if you have a suitor in mind, <laughs> okay. hey, Dom. Here you go, Dom. <laughs> Another project I'll add to my project list. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, Sarah. I just I know it's late there in, in Toronto. Oh, please. And, I, I, I just want to say thank you. 
Yeah, thank you for all your hard work. No, I just want to thank say you thank you. You, you thank are you for this incredible. Product. Yeah. Yeah, like how good. Well, that and also contributing to our industry and the culinary industry and our industry overall to Canada for so long. You're and such I a big that, part of for, it. For the people that don't get to go to those places and experience them, them in person, see, and back to back to what you just said, Jay, on paper, in a big magazine, that lets takes me experience there. that Sarah and takes see, there. see yeah. the artistry that the culinary industry is. Because yeah. even in the smallest, what you said about the Japan, the the culinary school in in Japan, and how much time was spent just learning how to hold a knife. Yes, I, there's not an appreciation. Yeah, it's true. It, it's it's harder and harder to have that appreciation because. We don't have the print magazine. We don't have the articles. They're, you know, people are, are scrolling. They're looking at things for three seconds and not three minutes. So unless you get, I, I think there's hope because the long format, not a podcast, podcasts are, are coming in. People are starting to listen and they want to know. So, um, you know, I, I think the, the ability for people to experience that and see all the work, all the hard work that go. Not never mind all the stuff you do, and that's important in the writing. But you're writing about the industry. You're writing about that restaurant. You're writing about that hotel. You're writing about that. That in this case, the play. That allows me to experience it. And the whole thing, yes, exactly. If you're not and, going right. The, the the importance of that is cannot be under or understated because or overstated for that matter it can't be overstated because most of us do not have the experience to go to Stratford. The reality is I don't know how many thousands they get there every year, but it might be a pretty big number. But in in the grand scheme of things, it's very tiny. So I got to be able to read about it. I got to be able to see it to to experience. I want to see the and the pictures like Jay said are in your magazine are stunning. The, oh. the photography is stunning. It it makes you feel like you're there. So congrats on that. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's super important to tell those stories and for restaurants and for consumers to understand that that you're not going to get to experience all these things. It's just it's impossible. We can't. You know, I went to Italy a few years ago uh, for a few weeks and I traveled a lot. Um I went to a lot of different uh, towns and villages and cities and areas and all that. And I wrote a, a big article, I don't know, maybe seven, eight pages about everything. And after it was published, people said to me, I'm going to Italy. I'm just going to follow exactly what you did because mm. you did everything uh, that I want to do. Congrats. They need a travel agent. They just follow everything I did. And I'm sure they had a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people would pay just to have dinner with you. <laughs> It'd be incredible. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't it? It'd be incredible. Like, like I just think, like, a lot of us, I think, well, not even, I don't know how to use the word society. But we do have a lot of people that don't experience food the way that maybe they should. Or, or they don't know the essence of food or how much work goes into creating some of these gorgeous dishes that you put. They take it a little bit for granted. And I don't, I think I'm hoping more and more people don't do that, but it does happen. And I think for you to give us the lens that you see things, I find super intriguing. Like to see yeah. how you see a dish. Like what's it like to dine with you? You know, I'm an appreciator. Yeah. Uh, when the dish comes, I look at it and I see, oh, they did this. Oh, they garnished with that. Oh, that might not be such a good idea. It <laughs> might not be a good idea to put cooked red cabbage as a vegetable on this plate. You know, I, I understand. Well, you're an artist, you know, the color scheme yeah. of things. So, they have to uh, honor each ingredient has to honor the other ingredient. And I appreciate that. I know what goes into it. I cooked myself. 
Yeah, so cool. Thanks so much, Sarah, for joining us. Yeah. We we really, really, well, really it's appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. If you you're being, ever in Toronto. I've no. been there a lot. I'm going to be there on the 19th. Well, I'll be so. there. So, Sarah, Sarah, next time that I'm in Toronto, I want to take you out for lunch. I really do. Because I think it'd be an I, honor. I would love it. It'd be an honor to take you out for lunch. I just want to thank you for everything you've done for us in the industry and contributing and also taking the time tonight to be on our show. Mm -hmm. It is a complete honor. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll stay in touch, Sarah, because when I'm coming and Dominic's going to be on the 19th. Um, the 19th I of definitely, this month in September. Yeah. This month. <laughs> I've been there three times this, in the last nine weeks, 12 weeks. I'm coming for a wedding on in September. Nice. I'll be there for a few days and then I'll be there back there in October again, actually. Yeah. For for five or six days. And yeah, we'll 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 get together. Yes. Well, right. thank you. you know how to reach me. Yeah. Yes, Sarah. I just want to thank you again. Have a great evening and uh thank you. it's been a yes. pleasure getting to know you. <laughs> no, your stories are incredible, and I can't wait to have lunch with you soon. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah. You bet. Good night. Thanks, Sarah. Bye, Sarah. Good night. Good night. So cool. Job. Yeah, beautiful stuff, eh? Yeah, I'm with you, oh. Jay, on the print. I'd like to see that too. Um, there, there's probably a place for for you, well, you. I, I think you look at the fo the whole photo thing and the oh, it's. Up and I all knew that there was stuff. an art connection. I knew there was an art. No, I, I you just don't. Are, cur you don't. are looking to print stuff again, right? So I think I, so. It I, is. I, I honestly would, think if I were if I were her, I would say print on demand because the printing services are good. Hey, I want a print copy of this. And it might be just a small niche thing, but there's, like you said, I think there's a, there's a spot for it. And because I, I it's think so I know there is. beautifully done. So. Oh, it's, you know, what's interesting. Um, I was, when you were talking with Sarah there, I actually messaged and I didn't forget to tell this to Sarah when we'll send this recording and everything to her, but um she the 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 magazine Ellie that she wrote for is actually my friend's chef Michael Guerreri, which I think I don't know if you ever met Chef Michael. I texted him and I said I have the writer of the magazine that you're in, and he was in multiple issues. So I don't know if Sarah actually wrote about Chef Michael, oh, okay. which is kind of cool. This small world, right, is yeah. just such an honor. But when you look at that, and I remember her husband too. I was looking at and I because. Growing up in Saskatchewan, we had two channels, CBC and, Sask and CBC and CTV. And I know that um, his show was on CBC, right? Yeah. And because in Saskatchewan, we're a few years behind things, right? So I know that I, when I saw it on the screen here, his face, I'm like, oh, man, I know Al Waxman. The guy's a legend, right? So we literally had Canadian legend on the show today. What, what an honor to have her and. That magazine is special because I do remember buying it. I do. I, I am surprised that it's there, there's not like special edition runs of it because it is big in the culinary world. It was a staple, right? It's incredible. So there you go, Dom. Two amazing shows, two days, yeah. two legends. Cool. Hitting out of the park, buddy. Hitting out of the park. Right Thanks, right. Jay. Have a good yeah. night, man. Have everyone else have a great night, okay? Bye -bye. Cheerio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.